hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, and I am streaming live from the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy Studio today. And I am super excited to have Joel Evan on uh, my podcast. He actually interviewed me a few weeks ago <clears throat> and still waiting for that to come out, aren't we? Aren't we, Joel? Yeah, man, I'm a little backed up with stuff, but uh, <laughs> that's don't good. worry. That's a good it's, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it's it's gonna be, it'll be good. I promise. Yeah, I know it will. And that was a great interview. Thank you. I actually did that in um, in your area at your at your studio in your house when in Idaho. Yeah, I, I was in Idaho at the time and had a super good time. You had a lot of good questions. So stay tuned for that. We'll be sending out links when when Joel has that all edited um, today, though. Uh, we're going to be talking about his book. Uh, when he interviewed me, we were talking about my book, Sickened, How the Government Ruined Healthcare and How to Fix It. And today we're going to be talking about his book, Ignite, which actually comes out, what, May 11th? Is that correct? May 11th, my friend, a couple of days from now. All right. Well, tell us about your book. Here's Here it is on Amazon. You can pre-order it now, correct? Yeah, you can pre-order, I believe. All right. So tell us a little bit about your book and Tell us a little bit about your history first, because yeah. you, you've been pretty famous lately. Um, <laughs> you've been on Fox News. I, I can't remember how many times. You probably don't know how many times, but uh, you've got a history. You were a police officer, and you have a family history of being a police officer. Your grandpa was a police officer in San Francisco. You were a police officer, and you refused um, to violate your medical freedoms and so you decided to leave the San Francisco police force and you've been interviewed by all kinds of guests all over Fox News and and, and other forums. Um, so tell us a little bit about your history and now why you're doing this. Yeah, thanks, Sean. So yeah, the book Ignite is a, is a guide to holistic weight loss, feeling confident in your own body and really unlocking your full potential. And, you know, when I wrote this book, I, I thought this is weird and this is silly because I don't consider myself a weight loss coach by any means. Like, how did I fall into this? But like you said, you know, my history goes far beyond that. I mean, for the last 15 years, like, Joel, who are you? What have you done? Well, I was a police officer. I was a police officer for the Oakland Police Department for six years. Anybody that knows Oakland, California, it is top five, dead or alive, one of the most dangerous and violent cities uh, in the world. Um, and, you know, St. Louis, Detroit, those are always up there. Washington, D.C., those always hit the top five in terms of homicides. But when you just look at violent crime per capita, it, it's it's definitely up there. And I just saw some stuff in the news with people are posting about Oakland recently with people throwing sh sideshows and cars on fire. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty crazy place. So I worked there for about six years. And then I migrated over to the San Francisco Police Department because I thought the grass would be greener. And uh, what you learn in life is that the grass is never greener. It, it's really what you make of it, and what you can you always control the the temperature and, and wherever the environment is. So you can move, and you know it's like when people that get divorced or they get out of different relationships. All these things you can look for external things to change, but unless you change as a person, none of that really matters. And that's kind of what I found out. And so. I love San Francisco, um, and I love, and I think being a police officer is still one of the most noble professions you can have. But I was really becoming disenfranchised with just some of the political things that were going on. I felt like I was a pawn for whatever the political, you know, flavor of the month was, and if it was, you know, uh, whatever someone's lives matter or whatever that case might be, I don't know. Every month it changes. Um, you know, I was victim of that, and I didn't like that. I felt like I didn't have control. I didn't have autonomy in my life. And there was always a burning desire for me to be an entrepreneur, and I wanted to explore that route. So I, I, I'm like, how can I help people? What do I really, really passionate about? And that is health and natural health. And I have always been a big proponent of natural health. I never really went to the doctors. Pretty much would go see acupuncturists or chiropractors and things like that. And it wasn't really until the birth of my first son nine years ago that it even forced me to go deeper. And I think kids man, that, that can be one of the things that is really amazing about them because you will do anything for your kids. It's just anybody that has kids knows that they will do anything. If your kid is sick or, you know, you will do more for your kid than you'll do for yourself. We know that. And so it's funny, you see a lot of great people, if their kid had cancer or something, they became a cancer expert because they were just like, I'm going to figure out anything and everything, every possible solution I'm going to uncover to save my kid. And that, and my kid didn't wasn't born with anything crazy to say, but 
I still had that natural instinct to want to protect him and give him the best shot at life. And so I really went deep in my, uh, my health. And, um, again, like I said, I was always in a natural health, but it forced me to even go deeper than places I never thought I would go, including experimental products like the uh, C word that we know. And, and I went even further beyond that. So yeah, that led me into life coaching and health coaching. I started a side business. Had no, I knew, I knew one day I was going to launch this business. Started at the end of 2019. Started to launch on the side as I was working as a police officer, getting things going. And then, lo and behold, uh, this thing called the pandemic hit. And uh, 2021 October, the San Francisco Police Department gave me an ultimatum. They said, "Either get this experimental product or you're fired." And I said, "Well, I guess you're gonna have to fire me." And uh, I was surprised, but they did. So I thought that was the universe's way of telling me, Joel. Stop playing one foot in and one foot out. You got to go all in. As Tony Robbins says, if you want the island, you got to burn the boats. And that's exactly what I did. And so here I am now. That is awesome. And I'm glad you're here now because um, I consider you a friend now and we've had some great conversations and you're really going to change a lot of people's lives by what you're doing now. So I think I, I like your attitude that you're you're using this as an opportunity to um, make things better. So um You know, and I'm with you. Um, And Tony Robbins is, you know, great inspiration, but really, you can't do it half time. You got to, if you're going to do something, you got to do it. You got to be committed to it. And um, I appreciate, you know, your willingness willingness to do that because it's a big risk, too. Um, You know, you had a, I mean, a great gig at San Francisco Police Department. You, you know, you were, you could have worked there for 40 years and had a great income and, um, you know, had a lot of stability, um, but you chose to do something different. So tell us a little bit about your health coaching business. Yeah. And you're just on that note, let's just talk about that really quick. Cause you bring up a really interesting point about this idea of courage and standing up for what you believe in, because out of, you know, 1500 police officers in San Francisco, 300 of us applied for religious exemptions. And as soon as they said, your religious exemptions are void and don't matter, that number 300 dwindled to like 80 overnight. And, you know, it was a surreal experience because I didn't really think I was brave or courageous or anything like that. I mean, I can talk about it now, but at the time I just thought I'm doing what's right. I'm standing up for myself. I'm aligning with my truth. And I was on text messages with people saying, man, I'm really sorry, like Joel and, and other people that were, were against this. I have to do this for my family. I have to do this. I, I have a newborn on the way. I have a mortgage. You know, I gave up a $200,000 salary a year and a pension and all these things, medical benefits. And I didn't know what that was going to look like. And um, now having been on the other side of it and incurring a ton of debt and uh, not having that financial st- stability that I had and not knowing, I am even more grateful you know, where people would say, man, you, you're just, uh, you're just eating crap every day. And, uh, I can't, you know, it it actually makes the experience even better. And it's taught me a lot about surrender and just allowing life and the unfolding of it and, and easing to life. And I really think like, thank God I did do this because it has again, taught me things that I could never read in a self-help book or any of these kind of things that you you read about, you pontificate about, but to actually live it and feel it, right. I think it's it's forced me to go down this route of surrender and that the universe, God, source, whatever you believe in, was telling me like, this is something you need to learn and you can help bring into the world and at least highlight. There's other great teachers out there that are already doing it. But um, that was it for me. And like I said, I'm learning a real valuable lesson in surrender. And I feel almost sorry for the people that didn't learn that lesson. And hopefully they did because we saw throughout the nation, the people that stood up and were courageous and said, I'm not going to do this and stood by in numbers. Those were the ones that the other departments and everybody backed down. They said, oh, okay, well, we, we won't do it this time. And so I really hope people learn their lesson. I was very empathetic at the time when people said, hey, I have to do this because I understood I had a mortgage, I had a family too. Yeah. And I and I, I really empathize with those people. But now looking back, I really wish those people had stood up because not only the lessons they would have learned, but as Tony Blauer, one of my favorite self-defense coaches says, is you know, fear is contagious but so is courage. And so the more we all stand up, you, you just see that it's, and I think that's a valuable lesson. So, um, that's that. Now you asked me, uh, tell us about health coaching. So, you know, I, again, when it, for me, when it comes to health coaching, I look at the body and if anything is happening to anybody's body, 
and they have a disease. You and I, I think, are very in, this, in the same, same alignment. I have a disease. I have uh, autoimmune. I have MS. I have uh, IBS. That's like one of the best. I have IBS. It's uh, like, yeah. uh, oh, okay. So, you know, all of these things are just imbalances in the body. That's why I look at it. There is no, and most doctors, the Western docs, from what I've seen, when they don't understand a disease or there's just like, man, we can't explain this. They give it a name, like multiple sclerosis. Yeah, we don't know. It's just, you know, the neurons are attacking each other. We have no idea why. And we're going to give it a name. But the problem with that is, I see it all the time again, is that clients and patients, they take on the disease. And they, they even manifest it even more. Like, oh, man, I, Joel, you don't understand. I have MS. Like, this is different. And like, like, I'm special because I have this disease. And it manifests even worse. And for me, it's like, get all that crap out of your brain. Like you have an imbalance in the body. Let's figure out what it is. What is the root cause? Is it heavy toxic metals? Is it mold? Is it candida yeast overgrowth? Is it parasites? What is it? And let's get to that and let's uncover that. And when we do, guess what? When you give the body the right input it needs, it knows how to heal on its own. And we've seen that time and time again. And so that's really what I practice. And Again, when I got into, so that's just the way I look at the body, the lens of the body, and that's how I coach people. So if they come to me, I get a lot of people that come to me for gut health. A lot of things I see that comes across is SIBO, seems to be very common with a lot of clients. SIBO and then probably candida, some kind of candida yeast overgrowth. And and parasites too. I think, I think parasites are a big thing that people are they think that's something you just get in a third world country and they're like, ah, it doesn't happen in the United States, but it happens. It's pretty prevalent. Uh, H. pylori is another big one too with food poisoning and things like that. And I think clients are just surprised that they're like, oh, you can, you can get rid of this without an antibiotic and that I'm actually going to get better and I'm going to actually feel better. And Sean, the last thing I'll say about this too is a lot of folks, guess what? You're going to love this. A lot of people, a lot of us are stressed. <laughs> we are stressed. We're stressed out. And so guess what? Our gut doesn't work very good because we're so up in our head that our gut doesn't work. We're stressed out. Cortisol is running, adrenaline's running through our body. We're shuttling blood out of the out of the, the stomach area into our veins to uh, the outer extremities to protect ourselves. And so you do that long enough, and the gut just doesn't function as well. So there's no, it's no surprise to me that I see SIBO in a lot of these high performers and things like that because they're having food go back out. Their ileocecal valve's not working, and you know they're having they're having a stress response constantly. And so, yeah, believe it or not, I get a lot of people that come to me for gut stuff. And I really niche down when I launched my business. The last thing I'll say is I niche down into weight loss. And again, I never thought I was a weight loss coach because I don't tell people to count macros. I don't. I don't do any of that. I really, again, I look at the body from a functional root cause issue, what's going on. And I kind of, that's how I navigated into holistic quote unquote weight loss. How do we, and I always tell people, I, I don't get you to lose weight. I get you healthy. And the byproduct is you lose weight. Yeah. You know, there, that, boy, there, there's a lot to digest right there. That was, that was great. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I think of a lot of the diseases and most chronic diseases, and, and you're right. You know, we label them in Western medicine and, and what it literally lets people do is in, in some ways is it lets them play victim. Well, I'm a diabetic or, you know, or I, I've got IBS and, you know, so I need to take all these fancy drugs. Well, you know, coming from a pharmacist standpoint, which is very powerful. I mean, for most chronic diseases, I don't believe in in drug therapy. You know, diabetes, one of them and, and IBS. I mean, seriously, irritable bowel syndrome. What kind of diagnosis is that? I mean, seriously, that, that, that that's almost like laughable when you think about it. And when I used to not think about, you know, when I used to not think in a more of a holistic way as a pharmacist, I would just think, oh, IBS, you need this drug. Well, when you think about what IBS is, that there can be so many underlying factors, most of it being diet related. I mean, let's face it, Joel, whether it's you or whether it's me or whether it's somebody with a diagnosis of IBS, if we eat the wrong stuff, we're going to have irritable bowel. I mean, guilty. I'm guilty, right? Yeah. I don't need some fancy drug. I mean, most most all these diseases you're talking about are are diet related, and like you say, gut health. And yes, stress and all that kind of stuff is is important. 
But the reality of it is, if you're not feeding yourself the right food in the first place, you're not going to have gut health. You're going to have overgrowth of all kinds of parasites and, and candida or, you know, dysbiosis for, for one. And um, the important thing is, is to feed your gut good, good nutrients in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's fast forward the coaching. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, let's fast forward to your book, Ignite. Um, what, what, what is this? What does this book, Ignite, talk about? Yeah. So, you know, over the last year and a half, I had a chance to work with about 100 people and I just start, started seeing the, a, a common thread and a common theme for a lot of them. And so I, I, I just felt like I wanted to get this out of me. I wanted to get this idea that like, Hey, it's actually possible to lose weight. And I, and I would have clients. I remember I had a one woman, Tierra. She was a first responder. She was a nurse. So she was working during the pandemic. I mean, just, just tough stuff. Had a kid probably two years prior. And she was like, Joel, I go to the gym, you know, for two years, I went to the gym like six times a week and I didn't lose a single pound. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, yeah, again, and you know this too, Sean, exercise is great. I love exercise, but if you're not changing your mindset and the diet first, then a, a lot of that exercise is just a waste of time. And and, and we know this because we see every year the, the New Year's syndrome of people going to the gym, Gold's Gym. I, I used to be a Gold's Gym member. And every January, from January to uh, first two weeks of February, it was packed and it was annoying. And then right. all of a sudden, you'd see all of that just go away. Because people were like, this is the year, I'm going to go hard. And they would go hard. They would either burn themselves out and go five days a week, and then they just couldn't sustain it. And then mentally they think, well, if I can't sustain this, then I'm weak and I'm soft and this sucks. So they go back to their old self. That happens, or they're just not seeing the results most likely. And so they get frustrated. It, it's, it takes everything. To me, mindset's the biggest thing, and then followed by diet and nutrition. And I'm a big proponent of detox too. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that. And so like Tierra is a perfect example. She didn't lose weight for two years. She went to the gym six days a week. I didn't have her do any exercise first three weeks. And she lost, I think, 14 pounds just doing a functional medicine detox, which I love to do with clients because it's a detox that opens up the liver pathways and uh, helps support the liver, so helps support drainage. And a lot of people are just backed up. And that's kind of what I talk about in this book is we are being bombarded by 80, I mean, and, and I'm not making this up, go to the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency's website. We're being bombarded by 86,000 man-made chemicals every year. So who has to filter out these toxins? The liver. And when the liver can't figure out how to deal with the 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 assault, the uh, onslaught of toxins, what it does is it's your body's very smart. It knows it can't kill you. So it's not going to put these toxins in your heart or your brain, at least in the beginning. It's going to shove them in your fat cells because yeah. it's like, well, at least we can shove them here and eventually, hopefully, you'll, you'll figure out what to do with this. But it's trying to keep you alive. So it's really actually a great system. The problem is when people start losing weight, those fat-soluble toxins now are being released because uh, now you're bought, you're sweating them out, you're burning them out, all that good stuff, and now they're being leaked into the bloodstream. So you start working out and do all these things, you might feel like crap. You might have this what yeah. they call Herxheimer reaction. And so if we can support the liver, and you can do that in numerous ways, but if we support the liver with binders and just supplements and things to support the liver, you can actually mitigate that or even not even deal with that kind of Herxheimer reaction. So that's a really nice thing that I like to do with clients. Um, and so anyways, I outlined this in the book. I talk about the, the, it goes through eight different chapters and the first two are mindset, your, your values, your mission, your vision. I feel like that's the hue. That's the foundation. If you don't have that foundation, then you are going to start. I could again, I could give you the beach body weight loss prior or whatever, and you'll do great. You'll do great for eight weeks and then you'll go back to your old self. So to me is the mindset's key. That's the foundation. If you don't have that foundation, then it's like, I always tell people, I want you to enter my program and exit the program on the same strong foundation. Because if you don't, again, it's just like Gold's Gym I mentioned, you'll go for six to eight weeks and then you'll just go back to your old self. Can't have that. We got to have you. It's life. You're always getting bumped around, but it's about reorienting to, towards that GPS of where you really want to go. Where is that North Star? So mindset's the foundation. We talk about that. Then I get into detox cravings. I, I talk about cravings, how to, where they originate from, how, how does that happen? How can we, how can we mitigate that? Right. Um, and then we get into diet, the perfect diet for anybody type, uh, exercise, sleep and recovery, 
and habits, systems, and then the final chapter is prior to prioritize and execute. And so it's uh, it's kind of a really it is the holistic mind body soul right there all all packaged in one. Well, I'm excited to read the book. Uh, I, I really am. I'm going to pre-order a copy today, and um, we can also you know chat. I want to I want to keep this conversation ongoing. We can chat about it again. Um, one thing I wanted to mention just just to hit on some points that you said is that. Uh, mindset is the key uh, for, for overall, and, and then and nutrition, diet. You know, you talked about um, your wife, and one of the things you did with her was you, know, you talked, you know, for three weeks before she went to the gym, you did diet, and and the and the age old saying it, it sounds like a broken record saying this, but it's just true. You cannot exercise your way out of a poor diet. I, I've been there. I've tried. It, it does not work. Um, so if you are and if, if you are trying to lose weight or just get healthy in general, you got to fix your diet before you start exercising. And and when you think about the hierarchy, you've already talked a little bit about this of, you know, there's basically three or four things we can do to, to stay healthy. And that's sleep, recovery, um, exercise, and diet. And, you know, of those, the most important is, is sleep or recovery. Because that's when we get stronger. That's when we recover. We, we don't get stronger when we go to the gym. In fact, we get weaker literally when we go to the gym or when we exercise. Um, and, you know, we do need nutrition to help us get stronger, to build stronger muscles. Um, but when we really get bigger and stronger and recover is when we sleep. And we will die without sleep before we'll die without food. That Those are just facts. Most of us have enough reserve in our fat to, to live for three weeks without food, not going to be much fun to, to, to uh, fast that long, but we can live for three weeks without food. Um, we can only live like three days without sleep, you know, before yeah. we actually get psychosis. Um, so sleep is the most important, diet second, and then third is actually exercise. You don't have to, to stay alive, you do not have to exercise. You know, you have to sleep to stay alive, you have to eat to stay alive. Um, now, will we be healthier if we exercise? Yes, but exercise is down on the list. So first of all, prioritize your sleep and your diet. Exercise comes later. Yeah, it's so funny too because so many clients, um, you know, when I first launched my program, I did an eight-week program and the first two weeks we just talked about mindset and clients were kind of, some people, everyone's different, but some people are kind of antsy to get started naturally. Come on. All right. When are you going to give me the exercise tips and the, and the, give me all the nutrition. Just get, come on, Joel. I want that. And I'm like, listen, just calm down because, (laughs) (laughs) because Hey, and I had results to prove it. Luckily I say, Hey, listen, so-and-so just like you lost, uh, you know, 20 to 25 pounds in eight weeks. And that's, and they did the exact same thing. So actually we did it in six weeks because they did exactly what you did. They started with the mindset and, and performance, you know, kind of uh, coaching in the beginning. And so that kind of would put them at ease, but I don't think they believe me. And then after they did a functional medicine detox and some stuff, it, it, the, the results were there. So then they, they felt good. But yeah, it's, it's funny, like you said. Well, and, and another thing is too, is I, I think what people need to realize is that, I mean, there, there are definitely quick ways to lose weight. There, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, you, you being a, an athlete, you know this, whether it be a, you know, any kind of weight class sport, whether it be MMA or boxing or wrestlers, I mean, they lose 10 pounds in a day. And I've been there, done that when I was a wrestler. Um, but but long term for overall health, you know, it, it's a slow process. and It's a dynamic process. And I think what people realize is even though you have goals, whether it be I want to, you know, be at this weight by this date, which I think is a very, you know, a very good goals to set. Yeah. The reality of it is, you know, you're never done. I mean, I, I've been obese before um, and I struggle with my weight and, and I'm going to struggle with my weight the rest of my life. I, I can't just be sedentary. I can't just eat everything I want. I mean, and, and that's that. just because I make a goal weight doesn't mean that goes away. It's, it's, it's a lifelong process. And that's what you're talking about with the mindset. Yeah, a couple of things you hit on too. One is there's some good studies suggesting that the people that went on long-term diets, they were actually, I think it was like 70% of them that were successful or continue to keep the weight off 
they had an exercise plan. They they actually exercise was part of their regime. Now, so there's some good there's some good evidence to suggest, like you said, hey, you probably should exercise. It's gonna be good for you. And I and I do recommend that. I I'm a whole I'm a big fan of exercise. I matter of fact, I do it probably five to six times a week. And everyone's gonna say, but Joel, you just said you don't have to exercise. You don't. And I want to be very clear, my exercise, and this has been going on for the last nine years, because when I was a first responder, in, actually, I go back before that, before I had my first kid nine years ago, I was doing jujitsu and CrossFit. I love these things. My wife said, Joel, when we have a kid, you think you're able to do these things? I'm like, of course. I'm like, you know how goal-oriented I am? I can do anything I put my mind to. And I was wrong. Uh, the kid, it was a lot, I had to give up one, so I gave up CrossFit. And then I had a second kid the three years after that. I had no time. So back even nine years ago, I had to start developing strategies of how to stay fit. So my workouts till this day are about 10 to 20 minutes tops. I, I don't, so time is usually the biggest barrier for people of why they can't exercise. And I'm here to tell you if even 10 minutes a day, and, and I talked about this in the book, like you can actually build t- muscle in 10 minutes a day. Absolutely. Like, Oh my God, no, you can't. Yes, you can. Absolutely. And I've interviewed some pretty high level people who are like study the growth of muscle and how muscles grown. They will tell you it's absolutely possible. And so that's what I kind of the strategies I give is like, how do we do this? I'm a busy entrepreneur, father, business owner. If I was a first responder, I was always working odd hours and I worked overtime. And so I get it, guys. I have a family of two kids and my wife and, you know, I totally get it. But there's things you can do. And and that's and I think what I would highlight here and goes back to the mindset piece, what you talked about is the consistency. Most people, when I get on calls with them, they don't tell me. I go, hey, what's your biggest problem? They never say, very rarely do they say, you know what, it's uh, it's that I eat too much and I don't exercise enough. Now, they know that, yeah, they're, they're, they know that it's subconsciously, I guess, or in the back of their mind, but that's not what they tell me. They tell me I'm not consistent and I'm not committed. Guess what, Sean? Those are two mindset issues. Yeah. So <laughs> I, oh, that's why I say it always comes back down to mindset. And so when I even look at my life and I never kind of extrapolated until I started r- really writing the book is nine years I've been doing this protocol of exercising 10, 20 minutes tops a day, five, six, four, four to six times a week, but I'm consistent as hell Yeah, because I, because I love it, you know? So, yeah. And you, you, you do it in your house. You, you mostly use resistance bands. Do you have a few dumbbells or something? I've got kettlebells, dumbbells, and, um, I have this thing called body weight and I just love to just trash my body. Sometimes I do some hit workouts here and there. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, body weight exercises are very effective. You don't need a bunch of fancy equipment. You don't need a gym. You don't need a gym membership. And when you're traveling, you can do it in a hotel. I mean, there you can literally do it in a space that's five by five. Um, we've got a question from a viewer, uh, Brian Wethel. Thanks for listening, Brian. He wants to know where to get your book. And Brian, I will stream this on Amazon. Brian, this is uh, thank you for watching. Um, this is where you can get Joel's book. You can pre-order it because it's uh, not going to be available until May 11th. May 11th. You can share the link too if you want, Sean. It's fine with me. Uh, yeah, the link. Well, it, it's streaming right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, so there it is on Amazon. It'll be on um, Amazon. So if you go and look at that up on Amazon, Joel Evan and Ignite, it'll come up. Um. And May 11th, it, the book releases for free, correct? Yeah, I'm doing a free. I'll be doing a free launch up until Mother's Day, and then on the uh, on the 15th, the day after Mother's Day, it's going to go up a whopping one dollar ninety nine cents. So be, yeah. be ready. <laughs> I, I, believe me, this sounds very familiar. Uh, when I launched my book, Chicken. Uh, I remember this process, and and it's a it's a fun process. I'm excited for you um, because it's a. It's, it's kind of overwhelming, especially when you uh, – that first launch, when you give the book away for free, and next thing you know, you're selling 1,300 copies. It's it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. To, it's overwhelming, but there's a lot of – it feels good. It feels good, and I'm sure you feel this way too. I was talking to a friend about this book, and um, I just like want to get it out into the world. I'm like, man, I just want to get this done and 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 get it out and i i actually i feel like i have all these other new things i want to talk about and i'm like i almost i almost don't care about the book and he goes joel it's totally normal he said he's a musician he goes did you know that um you know when when you see all these famous musicians when they're on stage he's like they've been performing this song for like five years this is this is like their manifesto for them 
it's clockwork. It's just so easy, but they're already out, you know, learning to do their next, they're bored too of their, 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 they're composing their next, you know, manifesto. So by the time you hear it, it's like already five years old to them. They don't care. It's like, Oh yeah, it's a great example. You know? Well, that is a great example. And it's also a reminder that, you know, like yourself, I, I can tell, you know, even though this is your first book launch, um, this is not your first rodeo when it comes to, um, you know, holistic health or helping people with health, you can just tell kind of the way you talk. It's like, you, you, you know what you're talking about. Um, it's pretty obvious. And that's why I love to interview experts like you. Cause you're easy to interview because you know, your subject kind of like a, kind of like a band would that, you know, knows how to play. It's, it's second nature to them. Yeah. Yeah, man. So Joel, as we wind this podcast up, um, what, what, what do you have a passion for? Man. Whew. Good question. Um, I, so I'm in the trenches right now. Uh, and I am, I'm really obsessed with, this sounds like silly. Maybe, uh, I'm obsessed though with just human development, personal growth and, and getting better and helping others get better. When I turned, uh, it was like, when I went, maybe the it was right after my kid was born, 2016, when I went out and got my first life coaching certification. The reason I got that, I remember, is my mom got cancer, my mother-in-law was sick, and I just remember thinking, man, all these people are like sick around me, and I want to be able to help them, and I can't. And I think it was also this, also having a kid, this helps a lot, yeah. is your ego, I have an ego, don't get me wrong, and I do my best to keep it in check. But what I'm saying is the ego kind of dissolves. And what I mean is, I stopped caring so much about all the accolades I was going to achieve and what I was going to do in life. That was how I was wired and driven up until then. And I, I think having a child just made me look at the world differently and made me, I, I stopped caring so much about myself and wanting to, I have all this knowledge, but I want to help others. I want to give it back. And so that is really what I'm driven by. Um, because I'm only a year and a half out of losing my nine to five job right now, People ask me, Joel, what do you do for fun? And I'm like, nothing. Like I am building a business. And but that is fun to me. I gotta be honest. Like that, mm -hmm. I I enjoy it, man, because I don't, there's so much I don't like the book launch. I've never done this before. So it's new and it's fun and it's exciting. Um, getting out speaking and doing more of that and, and my own podcast. So I'm just enjoying that. And then the last thing I'll say is right now, I mentioned to you earlier about surrender. And this experience has got me down the road of just really higher consciousness living and thinking. And and it's gotten me to really just reading texts like Nisrigadada, I Am That, The Surrender Experiment. I've got all these books about just time, uh, Eckhart Tolle, ne The Power of Now, and just really starting to realize the value of presence and how much we are disconnected from the world. And I'm and I'm starting to realize, like, again, you can have all these bio. You and I love this stuff too. But these biohacks and all these fun gadgets and all these things, but really none of that matters if you're not present and connected right now. None of that matters. And so that's something that I'm really passionate about, and and I'm starting to uh, incorporate and I'm building right now. Actually, a mindset course for high performers and entrepreneurs and people that want to perform at this higher level, but also. I think like I keep saying, I refer to as higher consciousness level. They want to build a business with a quiet mind and be less stressed, be less stressed, be more in flow and be healthy and optimal. And so that's what I'm building right now. And, and I'm building, bringing that into, that's like part two. The book's done, man. I'm down going into this. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just tell you, the book's never done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that personal experience. It's never done. <laughs> so Joel, what is the best way to get a hold of you if people have any questions? I'm streaming your website up here. What is it? Joel Evan Coaching? Yeah, Joel Evan Coaching. That's great. There's a little chat box there, which you, you have online. Uh, I don't recommend that because... Facebook will send me messages. I don't get notifications. And so if it's within 24 hours, I will miss your message. Shoot me an email if you want, info at Joel Evan Coaching. Or to be honest, I'm on Instagram, pretty active, Joel Evan Coaching on Instagram. If you go there, uh, it's the real me. I don't have any bots or anybody um, representing me. So if you want a quick question answered or something, that's that's a that's that's actually a really good way. Or yeah, like I said, info at Joel Evan Coaching. I have a podcast as well. If you people want to check that out, uh, your episode will eventually be on there. I promise. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that is a great. It's it was called the Hacked Life, and I ran that for about three years. And now uh, I've changed the name. I've rebranded the show. It's the Joel Evan Show. And again. It's all about higher consciousness, people like yourself, uh, entrepreneurs, high performers, and um, alternative health um, people that I liked. 
again, the world is full of the Tony Fauci's and the people that are, I, I don't need any more of those. If you want to come learn about alternative health and results, people that actually get results and get people better, then come check out my show, The Joel Evans Show. <laughs> I love it. And I'm assuming that, uh, here's a little bit of sarcasm just to for the prelude. I'm assuming that you don't mandate that people have to do your program or they get fired. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, you actually get off. <laughs> they, they have a choice? They do have a choice. Yeah, they have a choice. Uh, I'm all about results too, Sean. So it's like, I don't care what you do. You can go out and do anybody's program. I won't talk about it. I think there's a lot of good programs out there, but if you get results and and you're getting results from anybody's program, if it's carnivore, if it's paleo, I I don't care. Do whatever you like that is getting you results. That's all I care about. That, that, that's me hundred percent. I was uh, celebrating my youngest son's 21st birthday last night. um, And both my kids were over. I have two uh, grown boys and just great young men. And, you know, we were, we talked for hours about diet and health and nutrition and, and yeah, the conversation came up a, a lot about, you know, no one diet works for everybody and, and, and it doesn't matter or, or no one exercise program. They were talking about different weightlifting programs and how to build muscle or how to build strength and, you know, and what kind of you know time off you needed or for recovery. And, and here's, here's the bottom line is you got to find out what works for you and, and whatever works for you, have at it. And I don't care what kind of studies there are out there on XYZ program or blah, blah, blah. What works for you? An N of one is a study. What is going to be sticky for you that you're going to do consistently? I, exactly. I mean, I follow you uh, and I always see you biking. I hate to bike, but so I'm not going to do it, but you will. And because it, it's your happy place and you do a lot of it. Yeah. So keep doing it, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So Joel, always, always a pleasure to have you on. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, I can't wait to talk to you again. I will be in uh, the Boise area in a couple of weeks. Hopefully I can, we can connect again. So please come on out, man. I'll buy, yeah. I'll buy lunch for you. All right. Well, All listeners right. and listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in today to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Tune into our regular scheduled podcast, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, our midweek podcast uh, Thursday. I'm not sure who the guest is, but it's going to be somebody really cool. So you don't want to miss out Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you for listening. 